The Vietnamese called their women soldiers long-haired warriors. This poem is called Long-Haired Warrior in honor of them all, but especially one. Uh, Mrs. Tien is a Viet Cong veteran. And um, she enlisted in the Viet Cong at 10 years old when our American bombers destroyed her school and killed most of her classmates. Amidst dead children, I follow my teacher into battle. Mrs. Tien served as a courier where she met him, Tom Tien, uh, who became a Viet Cong unit commander while fighting the war. Of course, the American, uh, the Viet Cong and all of their soldiers were in the war until it was over, not just for one or two or three tours of duty. Uh, Tom Tien was in the war from the beginning to the end. He was severely wounded and almost died. If we had time, I would tell you his miraculous story of survival. He is the friendliest, happiest man I have ever met. Um, he is so grateful to be alive and welcomes our veterans. His own words, Tom Tien's words to our veterans, from now on, Vietnamese and American veterans must be the lips and teeth of the same mouth telling the rest of the world the same story. Well, they met in the Viet Cong and were married by their, their commander. I speak my vows to my man and country. Honeymoon ambush. They began their family during the war while fighting and struggling. They had three children. Nursing babies, fighting invaders, war inside and out. As I said, um, Tam Tien was wounded twice, but he laughs joyously. He lifts his shirt to show us his scars. He asks American vets to show their wounds too. And he points to his wounds and laughs and says, ha ha ha, how funny, you almost killed me. If I, really, if I had died then, I, we wouldn't have lived to this joyous day when we could meet and become friends. And he's laughing hard. It takes our vets a few minutes to get comfortable and realize he's not making fun, but he is truly joyous and good-natured. And they live on a small delta island, and we stay with them every visit. Dragon eyes, mangoes, eels, snails, turtles, grandchildren. Tides in, tides out, tides in. And finally, Mrs. Tian first time we met her, when she was saying goodbye to our veterans, she said to them, Last time you must leave, but tonight, please, dream in peace on my pillow. This next poem is called Song of the Vietnamese Women. It's made up of multiple stories from Vietnamese women that I collected over the years of my travels. So every story you'll hear is not of one person. Uh, well, every story belongs to one person. I've put it into a collective chorus so we can hear the chorus of the Vietnamese women in their collective story. I will grow my rice beside your craters. I will place my body before your tanks. I will give my hands to stop your helicopters and give my legs to cut your wire. I will mark your minefields to protect my village and hoe all day and stand watch all night. I will dig and chop and lash and haul to open jungle trails to foil you. I will go without rice so our fighters may eat and sing in the foxholes beneath your burning rain. I will wrap up myself in chains to show what you do and bandage your wounds when you fall into my arms. I will give my father, my husband, my sons, and bless their leaving, though I never see them again. I will pray you return to your mother's arms and forgive you, though you take everything I have. I will feed my men whose hands you have shorn. I will carry my sisters through the bleeding night. I will tend my buffalo as your bombs fall down and rebuild my dikes after you have blown them. I will lay my plow as straight as my gun, and plant young rice, and forge new bullets. 
Long after you are gone and have forgotten me, I will give my limbs to diffuse your minds. Mating, made for feeding, caressing, sowing, made for nursing, carrying, caring, made for planting, harvesting, cooking, made for threading, weaving, sewing, made for singing, dancing, laughing, made for acting, playing, loving. Come here with hatred and I will die. The helmet, the scope, the rifle, the bomb. I am grandmother, mother, wife, and daughter. Make me angry and you cannot be right. Make me mad and you cannot be just. Make me rebel though all I am wishes to birth and plant and grow. Make me resist and you show your heart. Make me fight and you cannot win. Make me stand and you will fall. Return in peace and show me your wounds and I will bind them with love and call you brother. We were traveling through the old demilitarized zone where there's still very much war damage evident, where the children in their elementary education are given education in how to recognize and avoid mines and bombs that are still there. And while all of our party were loving the journey, reconciling with the Vietnamese people, on this particular journey, there were a few who still couldn't get over some aspects of the war and couldn't understand it from the Vietnamese point of view. And a couple of our people said, I really love it here, it's beautiful, the people are friendly, it's definitely a spiritual place fused with Buddhism. But I still think the Vietnamese are subhuman because they use their children as bombs. And no, no body who is as sophisticated as we Americans are would ever do such a thing. So I struggled with that to explain it, to understand it and explain it. And I wrote this poem and it's called Song of a Grieving Mother. I love our water buffalo as much as our hut and our vegetable patch as much as your school. I love your, our rice paddy as much as my husband and my father's tomb as much as my sleeping mat. I love your father as much as our son. I love our pig, though we must eat him. I love our star fruit, jackfruit, and mangoes. I love rice, whether grass, seed, or grain. I love you, my daughter, as my mother loved me. No difference between these, this is Kwe Hong. And so, my daughter, you and our country are one in the same, no life without each. And that is why, with a love more than love, I dress you in bombs and kiss you as you leave. Until we can fully understand other cultures and their beliefs and their spirituality and their willingness to sacrifice, until we can fully rehumanize them, we will fail to rehumanize ourselves. <laughs>